Lift our hearts, lift our strings, let's revere our school of faith, ever true, loyal, true, for our colors, white and blue. Dear Princeton High School, our love, our pride, we've always held you. As our shining guide, our joys, our sorrows, hopes, dreams, and fears, we shared in PHS halls, will live through coming years. back with tonight's pregame show right after this. I've got ex-Tiger great Bill Winfrey alongside. And first of all, Mr. Winfrey, we want to welcome you aboard. Nice to be here. Well, okay, I'm sure you've seen the Tigers play several times this year. They run hot and cold. What's your overall judgment of the Tigers? It's early in the season. They uh, have a lot of talent. I believe they'll be all right. They probably come in a little bit higher than they were ready for. But they appear to me to be getting a lot more ready mentally to play. Physically, they've got all the tools they need. But I think they're getting prepared mentally for probably the stretch. Of course, you played some, uh, what, six, seven, eight right, years ago? 1973. 1973. And basketball, overall, the, the talent, or the, the rules, of course, haven't changed that much in the last seven years, maybe a couple of exceptions, with the slam dunk back in effect now, and so forth and so on. But you have to admit that it seems like every year the talent keeps getting better and better, doesn't it? So, the kids are a lot quicker, and they jump a lot better than we did. I don't think they shoot any better. Almost all of them shoot a lot better than I did, but they seem to be a lot quicker and can jump a lot better. Uh, of course, I think I think probably what contributes a lot to that is the the better equipment that they have to work with today. That's true. I think also they work probably as hard as we did, maybe a little bit harder, but they have a lot better equipment. They've got a lot better training program, but they know a lot more now about training athletes than they did in '73. And I guess uh, a lot of that contributes to that is uh, in today's high school, of course it's been that way in college for some time, but now in high school you're getting specialized athletes. Instead of the three and four sport man, you're getting a guy that plays basketball or football all year long. That's true. They, uh, you get a chance that way to develop the skills of the game. You don't get the overall physical conditioning uh, that you might get playing football, for instance, the toughness physically. but. You get a chance to work on your skills, which is so much a part of this game. Uh, your quickness, your movement, side to side, this type. All righty. I've got Bill Winfrey alongside, and we'll be back to talk a little bit more with our pregame show and the first half tip-off right after this, so don't go away. We're back in the Princeton High School Gymnasium, and we're awaiting the start of tonight's class between the Greenbrier East Spartans and under Coach Paul Greer and, of course, Ralph Ball's Princeton Tigers trying to get things back on the winning track. And we're talking a little bit with Bill Winfrey, who is a Princeton High School alumnus. And, Bill, we... You graduated in 1973, and of course you were an ex-Tiger Cager. Let's talk a little bit about that team in 1973. Who were some of those members? Well, uh, our leading scorer that year was Opie McKinney. Uh, Opie's still playing quite a bit of basketball, I understand, over in the men's league in Bluefield. He's working as an engineer at one of the major coal concerns in the region. Uh, one of our starting guards was Gary Meadows. Gary's now in Alabama, I believe, working down there. Or the last I heard, he was an assistant manager at the country club. Over Taylor's now working with a large retailing firm in Charleston, as is David Steele, who's one of the starting big fellas. David's now with an accounting firm in Charleston. I understand doing real well. He had some back trouble for a while, but I understand he's got 
that ironed out. Uh, I've been gone for a while, been in school and back in town now working, and just happy to be here. I Tigers play too much in the last few years. I've been following the Mountaineers quite a bit. Well, we won't hold that against you. No, I'm just kidding. We talk to several of the Mountaineer representatives when they get down to, to see the, the Tigers play, and uh, I, I expect to see a Mountaineer representative here this evening. I've been hiding from Coach Catlett ever since uh, he tried to get Alan Williams, and I guarantee to him one day when he came to the law school that Alan Williams was coming to school up there, and the coach has been looking for me ever since, and I've been staying out of his way. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Of course, I'm sure you haven't seen Greenbrier East play this year, but the Tigers, they run hot and cold, and, and of course, the other evening over at the Brush Fork Armory, they had some hot spots. But in the fourth quarter, now, they came out, and, and there for a long stretch, it seemed like they couldn't even buy a bucket. And of course, North Fork was hitting it hot in the fourth quarter. The controversial call, and of course the Tigers came out on the short end of things. How does that affect the team psychologically? It can go either way. I believe these kids are tough enough to where, uh, if anything, it might make them a little mad, which I think will be good. They've gotten out the early season jitters. They've gotten out the early season impression of possibly uh, what the rating was doing for them. I think these kids are ready to play some basketball simply because now they know that uh, they're not going to live on a reputation. They well, got beat by a fine basketball team. North Fork, I understand, has to come here a little later in the season, and I'll be here to watch that one. Well, a uh, second meeting is at the, the Armory again, but, uh, of course, I feel like no one should have any shame in losing to Jennings Boyd's team because they've had a fine tradition throughout the years. They shot well. They shot as well as uh, any high school team I've seen in a long time. And uh, Jennings is going to roll down there. There's no question about it. Of course, uh, we talked a little bit about the better athletes in, in high school now. And, of course, that's been the case in college for some time. But the Tigers, I think, have found themselves, uh, as Jack Pack always told me, he always wanted that 9'5", 200-pound fullback. And he never got it. But it seems like Ralph Ball is pretty well blessed with talent this year, doesn't it? Ralph is getting a lot deeper than any time I've ever seen him. He has now about eight or nine young fellas that can all play for him. When I was in high school and for the few years thereafter, there were always seven. But he has nine or ten people that he's bringing along in the program. He plays about eight or nine every night. They're a lot bigger than they were. I was a six foot six. When I graduated from high school, and I was one of the biggest people around. Now I'd be a small forward around here. That's interesting to me. Yes, it is. Well, you know, when you go into the pros now, if you're six four, you better learn how to dribble the ball. Otherwise, you ain't gonna make it. <laughs> That's true. Uh, not uh, very few people. Calvin Murphy at five eleven, and Bobby Danner's at six five playing forward. Are two of the smallest people in the NBA right now. We've got Bill Winfrey alongside, and uh, first of all, we'd like to thank him for stopping by and chatting with us, and we want to wish him the best of luck in his newly founded law career, and uh, we, we appreciate the fact that you stopped by and chat with us a little bit. I appreciate bit. that. I hope the Bar Association doesn't climb on me for a little illegal advertising. <laughs> thank you, Bill. Thanks, Greg. We'll be back with more of our pregame show and the first half tip-off right after this. So don't go away. Okay, I'm Glenn May. We welcome you to the... Preston High School Gymnasium. The Tigers coming out for a heartbreaking defeat the other night over to the Armory Blue Demons to take on the Spartans of Greenbrier East and Coach Paul Queer here tonight. Okay, we're at the gymnasium and I've got Bob Graham alongside and Charlie Wright. I got Jack Alaris sitting there looking ugly. Very good on the other side of the here. With <laughs> and welcome aboard, Jack. Or oh, John. Or <laughs> Hello, Bob. Hello, Glenn May. Welcome aboard. Thank and, you. Uh, we'll have no comments about timekeeping. No. Other than that, you can say whatever you want right now. Well, uh, just looking at the Greenbrier East team, I think we're going to have a, a... I'm not sure we're going to have a good game. I hope Princeton plays uh, better than they did against North Fork. I hope they're up for the game, and I hope they keep getting up until uh, the 13th when they go to uh, Kingsport. And then on the 18th, we're going to have a real big game coming up with Williamson here at Princeton High School. And Williamson, of course, is the top-ranked team in the state. And then the 26th on a rematch with Oldport. Oh, that's going to be a doozy. 
And in that game, we will mention the timekeeper. And right now, Charlie Wright's sitting over there biting his lip because he wants to say something about timekeeper. Charlie, you can say hello, but leave the timekeeper out. Yeah, I'll leave him alone, you know. <laughs> I'm anxious tonight to see uh, how the Tigers will play tonight after that heartbreaking loss. Uh, that may take a lot out of them. Um, you know, to lose a game like that at the end of, end of the last play, uh, well, you know, regulation time. I'm just anxious to see how they'll play tonight. Is it true that you had a hammerlock on that timekeeper the other night? He still wouldn't put time on the Jordan David clock run right? Well, I didn't have a hammerlock, but I sure was staring at him. <laughs> <laughs> and now we got Jack Allaire over there, and of course, uh, Jack, he's got it down in the dumps, because uh, things going wrong up north and so forth, but Jack, welcome aboard with us anyway. Well, an eight-game winning streak's not, nothing going wrong. Yeah, but he might be, uh, you know, you know, Spanishbrook Junior High, Oakville Junior High, Glenwood Junior High, and you got some five-year athletes up there. I mean, I didn't say five-year students, I said five-year athletes. Well, you know, you know, I was trying to get that scorekeeper to put seconds on at the end of the game, but he wouldn't do that. Well, anything we needed, you know, anything would have been helped. I, I was trying to get him to put six seconds back up on there, he wouldn't do that. Well, you're there to run them all over, let's go overtime. Well, yeah, take a point off, put a point back on, you know. Well... He was anyway. doing all kinds of crazy things, you know. Uh, you guys want to comment on the officials here tonight? Johnny <laughs> Brown, George Simon. Give him an eye charge. Give him an eye charge. Yeah, see if he can read it. <laughs> Jack called up the side and says four. Four <laughs> one. Four <laughs> one. Four. Okay. You see if he said, you know, he may say that's six. Yeah, he might say it's 20. Of course, you know, if you got a degree from WVU, you probably come up with probably, you say, that's full house. <laughs> four kings. That's what you guys made your friend. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Do you believe that? I don't know about that, Greg. <laughs> of course, I, I've heard some of the comments that Charlie said about it. You know what he said about WVU, Jack? No, what he said. He said if you had a big palm oil, the best thing you could do that place was plow it up and plant it in corn. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to tell you, though, now, we've, you've been kidding about West Virginia University. I have to say, in all fairness, that the program at West Virginia University, maybe they're not playing the best schedule, but uh, I have been somewhat impressed with the way they've played your lately. I mean, but it don't take a whole lot to impress you, Bob. No, sir, I'm a Royal Mountaineer fan. <laughs> okay. But, of course, I, I have to play I've been the, very impressed. I like to play the devil back with you guys on this because it's frustrating. I can see your cheeks getting red and everything else. <laughs> Look at Jack over right there. Looks like he swallowed a balloon full of water. <laughs> or was that gas thing? <laughs> <laughs> if Gail Catlett's on the way in here in his car and listening to this broadcast, Gail, at least three of us love you. <laughs> uh, if Gail and uh, Gary's on the way down, we'll be more than happy to talk to them. And they know that I support the university. I pay taxes to support that thing. And I even sent them a $25 contribution last year. Ooh. Well, you, got, you got seats on the 50-yard line, didn't you? Well, no, but for $25, now $25 to me is like probably 25000 to you three guys, because I work for a living. <laughs> well, I did work three hours today. I'm sorry. I hope you didn't overdo yourself. My well, back is killing me. You reckon Charlie got out of the house today? I don't think Bob's got don't, don't sell Charlie short, because I know that his wife is working hard right now. That's true, but you know, I, I saw Charlie's car the other day. Well, Charlie goes out and works out of his car, and I saw a pillow and a blanket in the truck, and I know many a day he's taking a nap in that front seat. <laughs> That's true, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're waiting for the Tigers to come back on. We'll be back with basketball first. Let's pause for this. All right, as the roosters are put to roost. <laughs> We got any starting lineup here tonight? Uh, I think Charlie Wright's got the Green Bay's starting lineup. Are well, you going to do Princeton, Charlie Wright? Do Princeton here. Let me do, do Princeton, Princeton, Charlie Wright. Okay, for Princeton tonight, starting at one of the guard position will be Jeff St. Clair's 5'8", 140-pound senior. At the other guard position is Mike Earl Eads, 6'5", 160-pound senior. And tonight, uh, at one of the forwards will be James DeWitt. He's six foot three, 165-pound junior. At the other forward position will be Stephon Strain, 6'3", 165-pound senior. And at center tonight will be Jimmy Miller. He's 6'8", 195-pound, 190-pound senior. And some of the reserves tonight will be Daryl Gwill, Joe Harrison, David Brooks, David Tabor, Troy Clements, David Phillips, Russell Harris, and Jeff Adams. Bob, you have your birth. Okay. Kristen, both teams now on the court. We have about just a second or two here. 
David Darnell, a 6'3", 165 pound senior, will start at one of the forward positions. Scott Dolan, a 6'2", 160 pound senior, one guard. Both of those two individuals played quite a bit for them last year. Wilfred Keyes, a 5'9", junior, will start at guard, the other guard. The other forward will be Kenny Rose, 6'2", 170 pounds. I'm sorry, he is a forward, Kenny Rose forward. And the center will be Ray Wooding, 6'3", 200-pound junior. So you have three seniors, two juniors. Two of those individuals played a lot for Green Bay's last year, Darnell and Dolan. And you will see John Campbell coming in off of the uh, pitch for them, a 5'10 senior, and will substitute a point guard for Green Bay. Glenn? Okay, I've got a couple of messages I've got to pass on uh, because of adults I was threatened with bodily harm. Jeff uh, St. Clair wants to pass his regards to a certain young lady that he knows by the name of Debbie Literal. Earl Lee says hello to his grandma, <laughs> Elva White. All right? Hey, we'll be back with all the festivities of high school basketball. First, let's fall for this message. And we've had the word passed to us, and we're very happy to pass it along to everybody else. But Clinton Barnett came home today from University Hospital, and uh, Clinton Barnett, uh, very uh, well-liked and well-respected, former coach of the Tigers and also on the WBU staff. And we wish uh, Mr. Barnett all of the best and the uh, success in getting well. As they're ready to introduce the starters right now, and the Tigers, of course, the Tigers got a busy season, a busy part of the season coming up right now because tonight they got Greenbrier East right here. Next Tuesday night, Mountview is in here. Next Friday night, we go to Bluefield, and a week two from Tuesday night, we go to Mountview, and then of course Friday week we're at uh, Sullivan North for the first night to play Dobbs Bennett. Second night we'll be at Dobbs Bennett to play Sullivan North. I got that straightened out finally. Well, you said we played Sullivan North third night. No, no. The first night we play Sullivan North. We play Dobbs Bennett at Sullivan North. Okay. The gotcha. second night we play Sullivan North at Dobbs Bennett. Got, uh, got you, man. We, we're on the same wavelength. Okay. We well, don't want to find those schools that. Oh yeah. You do? Yeah. But well, Dobbs Bennett we can find. They're in Kingsport. Three. Sullivan North. This is Kingsport. Both of them in Kingsport. Oh yeah. Can I go up there and get a class like Charlie Wright does when he's, when he's leading the way to Wade? Charlie Wright has lost on his good days. On his bad days, we won't even ask him. <laughs> you want to, how many points does Jim need for a thousand? Jim needs uh, 46 points for a thousand. I might give you some averages so far on the season. Chris is averaging 75.2 points per game, giving up 58 points a game. Jimmy Miller has 209 points on the season, averaging 23.2 a game, and he's hitting 82.5% of his free throws, and I can think of uh, one and one off the two twos tonight, but I sure would like to see him made at least one up. Mike Eads has 159 points, he's averaging 17.7 points, he's a 79.6% free throw shooter. James DeWitt. He's averaging 15.2 points. James has been in a little bit of a slump the last three or four games. He's hitting 73.9% of his free throw opportunities. Jeff St. Clair is averaging 7.8 points per game. And uh, two-thirds of his foul shots are falling through for Jeff. Stephon Strain, I think, had a real good season for Princeton. He's averaging 6.1 points per game, hitting uh, an even 50% of his free throws. And... Uh, Princeton as a team is hitting 71% of their free throws. All right, what did that JV happen tonight? Well, in the JV game tonight, um, Princeton lost uh, to Greenbrae 64 to 58. Leading scorers for Princeton, uh, Rusty Harris 14, Troy Clemens 12, Greg Thompson. And Greg Thompson just impresses me as an excellent athlete, along with being a good football uh, player for uh, Jack Pack's football team. David Brook 7, Mark Brook 7. Joseph Harrison, five, and David Taper, three, and then we're just about ready for that opening tip-off. Okay, David Darnell into jump center with uh, Jim Miller, and of course, uh, Jim is standing out there right now. They're shaking hands all around as Darnell standing with one foot in the center circle. Jim backs around, looks at the official, and Jeff St. Clair moves from one end of the floor to the other. Now Jim moves in, the official tosses a tip control to DeWitt. As James picks it out of the air, waits for traffic to clear, waits for the to St. Clair to come to him and give him the ball. Now it goes back to DeWitt. He's on the wing, left side. Gives to Miller, low post, turning, firing off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Greenbrier. And pulling it down out there. One of the 
Well, we're going to sneak in is this number 21, Wilford Keyes. Keyes will be the point guard. He's directing traffic now. And there, the Tigers in a 1-3-1 one, one zone defense. Is Keyes still directing traffic? Because uh, I guess maybe they're having trouble orientating himself to the gymnasium. And Keyes starts it down the right side to Rose. Rose gives it back to Keyes, back to Rose again. They look underneath, gives it back outside. Keyes will come outside, they'll turn it over again. They bring it to Dolan on the near side. Dolan back to Keyes, he turns around, looks at the bench, and call Coach Paul Weir gives him some instructions. And the Tigers still in that 1-3-1. As uh, right now, Rose with the ball at the wing position right side, they bring it to the near side to Dolan. Dives to the baseline, takes the shot, goes up with it, we've got a whistle and a traveling call. Tigers will inbound it, and Greenbrier's going to press. DeWitt brings it in to St. Clair, to Eads. Eads in the backcourt with it. They try to tapping up the center line. He gets it back to St. Clair. Jeff, trying to get in the front court, has it tipped away. Picked up by Kenny Rose. Rose takes it down the right side. Gives it to Darnell. By trying from outside, it's good. David Darnell from 21 feet. Two to nothing. The Tigers trail is Eads. Brings it to the half court. Loops in the front court to step on the Miller. Goes to the baseline. Fakes. Spins, fires off the glass, no good. Rebound tipped up once by the wind, no good. The wind tips up again, no good. Stephon ties up. And I thought we had Stephon going over the back here. How about we got a tip ball? As Stephon puts the ball in the air, and Johnny Bratz, the official, catches it, and we'll have a jump ball. And it will be Stephon Strength in the jump against David Darnell. And the other official blows the whistle. He's going to spread them out on the lane a little bit. They're starting door on the back side. He's lined up right in front of the basket on that free throw lane. And the tip's controlled by Greenbrier East. They kick it outside. The... Dolan goes down through it. They're kicking it to Keyes. And Keyes is called for turning the ball. So it'll be Tiger ball. And Keyes called for the parling violation. DeWitt will end down it for the Tigers. Give it to St. Clair. Six and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Two to nothing. Greenbrier leads. Deeds with the ball. Wing position left side. Looking underneath. Gives it back outside to St. Clair on the point position. They come to the near side. He drops it inside the middle. Goes under. Puts it up. No good. We got a whistle on a foul. And Stephon Strain taking a pass. Looping it over to Miller. Miller driving the baseline foul. And that foul was called on... David Donnell, number 45. And that's his first foul. And team foul number one on the Spartans. And it will be Miller on the line to shoot. Two shots for the Tigers. As Miller will put it up with the right hand. He squares away from the line and fires. It's good. He'll have a second. Two to one. The Tigers are on the scoreboard with 6.19 left to play in the first quarter. And Miller will get one more chance. He fires. It's on the iron and good. He got front iron, side iron, and it drops. He got string, and that's what counts. So now the Tigers will press it. Darnell throws it up floor into the front court. As they go underneath with it to Wooding, he puts it up no good. Rebound rejected. He got rejected by Miller. DeWitt comes out with it for the Tigers as DeWitt into the front court dribbling. Starts it to the left side. Gives it to St. Clair to Eads. Eads on the near side. Starts it underneath. It's knocked loose by Keyes. Picked up by Eads. Eads to St. Clair, top of the key. They go to Miller in the lane. Turning, fine, good. Miller from about nine feet. Four to two, the Tigers on top. As St. Clair puts on a one-man press as Wilford Keyes. Reaches to the front court for Greenbrier. Moves it to the near side to Dolan. He's firing from 18 feet. It's off the front of the iron. As St. Clair takes the rebound. Running into the front court behind the back pass. He goes under, lays it up, no good. Rebound pulled off by Greenbrier. Dolan clears it out. Dolan. Leads it outside to Keyes. And Keyes moves it to the front court with a left-hand dribble. On a way high post to Darnell. Darnell gives it outside to Dolan. He gives it back to Keyes. They go around the horn to Rose. Back to Keyes in the lane. Gives it over to the near side to Dolan. Drives the base off. Puts it up no good. Miller rebounds in traffic. Puts it out to the wet. The wet on the break. They got step on underneath and throw it out of bounds. Tigers turn it over. 4-2, the Tigers leading with 5 0 to play in the first quarter. Tigers trying to run and committing a turnover right there. So Greenbrier East to the offense. As Wilford Keyes dribbling the ball, not loose to St. Clair, but it's recovered by Keyes. And St. Clair moves it to the front court. The check as Keyes moves it to the front court as they tried to set a pick on St. Clair. Gives it to the far side to Dolan. He gives it back outside. They come to the near side to Dolan. As Dolan. Gives it back to Keyes, top of the key. Now to the left side, they go to Darnell on the high post, firing over Miller, and they good. He got an awful lot of iron on that, is spinning it around and around and drops it. As Eads with the ball for the Tigers, in the backcourt with it, moving it into the front court. 
to Stephon Strain at the quarter court. And he gives it back outside to St. Clair and he'll start the offense. He's directing traffic. And now they go with it to Eve on the wing left side. Drives underneath the baseline. We got a whistle. And there's a foul called on the drive. And the foul called on 45 or 43. Who'd he call them? I couldn't, I couldn't tell. That looked like kind of a draft. 43, I believe. 43? Okay. Foul calls on Woodley. So foul down for the Tigers. Inbound pass East. Firing out of the corner. No good. Comes off the side iron. Has the rebound pulled out by Keyes off Greenbrier. Into the front court with it. To the near side. The goal and firing from 20 feet off the iron. No good. The wet rebounding over top of Darnell. As the wet brings it to the front court for the Tigers. Starts it to the left side now. He'll fire from 20 feet. Over the flange. No good. Rebound comes down. Hits the floor. Scramble for it. And we've got four bodies on the floor. We've got Eads and Strain in for the Tigers. And in uh, is Rose and Woodding, I think it is, for uh, Greenbrier. And that foul was called on Ray Woodding. So now we will have Strain to jump against Kenny Rose. Step on. Up and we'll jump it again. As the official talks a little out of reach of both. Tip control by the Tigers as Stephon tips it to the whip. The Wit gives it to St. Clair. They go back to the Wit. He's on the wing, left side. Trying to get it to Eads on the high post. Throws it over top, and St. Clair runs it down. Now the step on, on the right side. Goes to the baseline. Firing off the baseline. It's off the iron, no good. Eads rebounds. Fakes. Fires. Comes across, no good. Picked up and in by Miller. Jim Miller tips it in. Six to four. Tigers up with 3.42 to play in the first quarter. As bring it to the front court is Dolan of the Spartan. Holds it up and gives it to Keyes. Keyes direct traffic. One, three, one zone for the Tigers. As the pass deflected, uh, intended for Dolan, deflected by the wit out of bounds, it will be Greenbrier East ball. Out of bounds in the front court. As Dolan comes over to inbound it. As he gives it into Darnell. Darnell flips it to Keyes. Keyes will start the offense. Starts it toward the lane to the left side to Dolan. Looking underneath, gives it back to Keyes. And Keyes. Gives it back to Dolan on the baseline. Comes around toward the lane. Now drops it underneath to Wooding. Goes under, puts it up. No good. We got a whip on a three-second violation. Ball of Ray Wooding out of the Spartans. Well, so far in the game, we only had two players to score. David Darnell for Greenbrier East. Jimmy Miller for French. As Spartans are stressing the Tigers, and the whip takes the pass to St. Clair to the front court to to St. Clair, side of the key, trying to get underneath the Miller, has it deflected, picked up by Dolan of Greenbar, behind the back dribble, into the front court with it. Now he holds it up, waits for traffic to clear, gives it to Darnell, firing from 20 feet, hit it. David Darnell for Greenbar. Six to six, as he brings it to the front court for the Tigers, has it tipped away, picked up by Greenbar, coming up with it with Rose, into the front court with it to Darnell, drops underneath the Woodings, Flips it back to Darnell as he started out of bounds. Now we got a whistle and a foul. Call on Mike Eads. That's number one on Eads. Well, one thing that's happened tonight, I, you know, over North Fork, Jimmy had two fouls out him in the first minute of the ball game. And um, I, for one, am kind of glad to see the fouls not going very uh, rapidly early in this ball game. As Dolan will end down it for Greenbrier. Feeds it in outside the keys. Keys goes into the lane. Firing over to Whittle. The flange no good. Jeff on. Dying for the rebound. Flips it outside to St. Clair. Jeff into the front court to Eads. On the baseline left side. Good. Eight feet away and St. Eads pounds it in. Eight to six. The Tigers up by two with 2.23 to play in the first quarter. As Keys brings it to the front court and we've got a double dribble. He dribbled it off his leg. Rolled it down the leg. As St. Clair putting a little pressure on him. They have caused it. So it'll be out of bounds to the Tigers. Off the whip. Then down to Jeff St. Clair. Jeff moves it to the front court. Brings it to the point position. To James DeWitt on the right side wing. Trying to get it back to St. Clair. That's deflected into the back court by Scotty Dolan. Now Green Bryant. St. Clair picks it up. Brings it back to the front court and gives it to by Keith. Keith starts it toward the baseline. Goes under. Drops it to Noah. Noah goes under. And lays it up and in with both hands. And everybody was looking for the slam dunk. And he chose not to. 10-6, the Tigers up by four, with a minute 54 to play in the first quarter. As Keyes brings it to the front court for Greenbrier. First on St. Clair, and DeWitt, and it's up the pass, DeWitt on the breakaway, goes down, underneath, puts it up, no good, St. Clair tips it up and in, yes, St. Clair. 12-6, the Tigers up. A minute 34 to play in the first quarter. As Keyes brings it to the front court for Greenbrier. Gives it to Scott Cohen. 
He gives it back to Keyes. He's on the left side. Starts it down toward the lane. To Dolan on the left side in the corner with it. To Darnell, and they give it back outside. And Dolan with it. Back to Darnell. He's firing out of the corner. Go up behind, no good. Stephon trying to rebound. He is fouled from behind by Kenny Rose. Uh, Stephon is set up in that rebound position. And that's number one on Rose. Team foul number three on the Spartans. And we'll put James to Witt out of bounds with it. He inbounds it to Jeff St. Clair. Jeff gives it right back to the Witt. He tries to get it up the middle. It's deflected. Picked up by the Spartans as Darnell intercepts. Gives it to Keyes. Firing from outside. It's on the iron. Good. 12-8. Tigers lead by four. And St. Aziz brings it to the front court for the Tigers on the left side. Looking underneath, starts it toward the baseline. Firing out of that baseline, it's good. He got it on the iron, on the glass, and dropped it. 14 to 8. The Tigers lead by 6 with 49 seconds to play in the first quarter. As Keys will bring it to the front court for Green Drive. Give it to Dolan. Scott Dolan dribbling with it, comes outside with it, gives it back to Keys. The Tigers still in that 1 3 1 zone. As Keys with the ball way outside, now they get it to Darnell on the high post. He stops the key with it, gives it back. They go around the horn with it. Rose with the ball on the wing, goes underneath to Darnell. We got a whistle on the foul as Darnell trying to go down the lane. He is fouled by Jeff St. Clair. And that's number one on Jeff, team foul number two on the Tigers. And they said they called it as he started to drive, but when he was shooting, so it'll be the uh, Spartan ball as David Phillips checks into the ball game for the Tigers. And James DeWitt catches his breath. So Keyes takes the inbound pass with 25 seconds to show on the first quarter. Keyes with the ball, top of the key with it. Moving to the left side to Dolan. Back to Keyes. Turns around, looks at the clock. Now he puts it on the floor. There goes the far side to Darnell. He gives it right back to Keyes. Back to Darnell. As Keyes with the ball now, starts it down the top of the lane. We've got nine seconds on the clock. They go to Dolan. Goes to the baseline. Fine. Good. With five seconds on the clock. As Stefan brings it into Eve, goes to the front court. As the firing from near midcourt, no good. So at the end of the first quarter of play, the Preston Tigers, 14, the Green Valley Spartans, 10. And we'll be back with more. First, let's pause for this. We're here after a slow first quarter of uh, basketball. First at six field goals, two for two at the foul line, 12, 14 points. Green Valley, five field goals, 10 points. Mike Eats had two field goals for four points. Jimmy Miller, three field goals, two and two at the foul line, eight, eight points. David Darnell, three, points, three field goals for six points. Scott Dolan, one field goal, and Wilford Keyes, one field goal. Charlie? <laughs> for Princeton in that quarter, first quarter, they made six out of 16 for 37%. They pulled down 10 rebounds and committed five turnovers. Jack, you have uh, East <coughs> was 5 and 11 from the field, 45%, five rebounds, five turnovers. Even number that. Okay, I almost tongue tied you, didn't about <laughs> I don't know. I don't know which one I was wound up the worst in the third side department. <laughs> uh, you couldn't have recited the Gettysburg Address this episode. <laughs> okay, Tigers are ready to go. We've got Miller, St. Clair, DeWitt, Eads, and uh, Strange. And Greenbar comes back to the starting five again. They've got Keyes, Dolan, Rose, Wood, and Darnell. And they tipped it up and tipped to the floor, kicked around, and there's a scramble for it. We'll have a tie between Eads and looks like uh, Kenny Rose of Greenbrier. As Miller was on the floor in the stack, but uh, they didn't get him as far as the jump. As we're waiting on Rose and Eads now, the tip this time, controlled by the Tigers, as Miller picks it off, drives with it, goes down, and we got a foul. Well, we didn't get that foul. We'd have traveling, sure as the world, wouldn't we? That's number two on uh, the team foul number four. Who's the foul on, by the way? It's on the road, wasn't it? Uh, Kenny Rose. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the Tigers will inbound at the side court. Eads inbound it to St. Clair. Jeff starts it across the point. Takes it toward the left side. He goes to DeWitt. On the wing. Left side to Strain. Deep in the corner. But feeds it back outside to St. Clair. Now they go to Miller. Low post. Working inside. Puts it up. No good. Hit by Miller. Good. Two shots and one rebound. Is that right? 16-10, Tigers up, as Keyes will bring it to the front court for Greenbrier. Comes to the top of the key to Darnell, fake into the lane with it. Fires, we got a whistle and a foul, and that's probably on Stephon. No, it's on Jeff St. Clair. And that's two on Jeff, isn't it? Okay, and team foul number three on the Tigers. So it'll be out of bounds to the Spartans. Uh, Scott Dolan will inbound it. 
as Owen inbounds it to Keys. Keys takes it across the top of the key, directs some traffic with it, brings it back to the near side. And they give it to Dolan. Dolan trying to drop it underneath to Wooding as a tip loose, but picked up on the other side by Rose. As Rose gets to Darnell, we should have a traveling call. We got a traveling call. It'll be Tiger Ball in the backcourt. As the Spartans will press, as the wind inbounds it to St. Clair, he gets it up to E. D drives it to the front court down the left side. Drives it all the way to the baseline. Now he turns and brings it out. Gives it to St. Clair, top of the key with it. Jeff gives it right back to Mike. Looks at the bucket. Holds it. Gives it to Stefan Strain in the corner. Stefan comes around the horn. Gives it to St. Clair. Fakes the shot. Goes toward the lane. Drops it to Miller. Low post. Hooking off the baseline. On the iron. No good. Nor at D trying to tip. And the ball tipped out of bounds. It'll be Greenbrier ball. As Darnell will inbound it for the Spartans. He gets it into Keys. Keys. Makes, brings it toward the front court. Right through the center circle. Starts it toward the right side. As they go... In the corner with it to Dolan, firing good. Dolan from 20 feet right side. 16 to 12, the Tigers lead by four as Mike Eads brings the ball to the front court for the Tigers in traffic. As they try to double team him, he gives it back to Jeff St. Clair. St. Clair on the point position. To James DeWitt on the wing right side, they get it to Stephon baseline right side, good. From 12 feet. Stephon Strain hits it 18 to 12. Tigers lead by six now as Keyes brings it to the front court for Greenbrier. Starts it down toward the baseline. Gives it back outside to Wooding. And he feeds it to Dolan. Dolan drives the baseline. We got a foul on Mike Eads. And on Eads, that's number two. On team, that's number four. Foul call on Mike Eads. second. As they're going to mop a little perspiration off the floor where it's a little slippery out there where Eads kind of sat down. I guess when they do that, at least they know you worked up a sweat, huh? You know, Charlie Rack play a whole game and wall over the floor and never make a wet spot. As Dolan inbounds it to Keys. Keys back to Dolan. Firing out of the corner off the iron. No good. Rebound tipped up by Darnell. No good. And the wet guy has to pull it down. Loses it to Dolan. Dolan fires off the glass. No good. It's front court. As St. Clair claims it for the Tigers. Brings it to the front court. Behind the back pass to Eads. Firing good. St. Clair behind the back pass to Eads from eight feet. Puts it in the net. 20 to 12. The Tigers on top. As Keyes with the ball. In the front court with it for Greenbrier. Between the legs dribble. Turns around. Turns it to the far side. Gives it to Kenny Rose. And he travels. As he rolls it up his arm and across the back of his neck. The Tigers will inbound it. It's DeWitt. Inbound it to Jeff St. Clair. Jeff in the backcourt with it. He gets the press. Gives it to Miller. Jim brings it to the top of the key. Holds it up. Waits for traffic to clear. Gives it to St. Clair. Jeff will fire from 21 feet. It's in and out. No good. Rebound. Pulled out by Rose of Greenbrier. Gets it out to Dolan. Dolan into the front court with it. Starts to the left side. St. Clair reaches in. Takes it away and calls for the foul. And that's number three on Jeff. Team foul number five on the Tigers. And we'll see Scooter Will off the bench, I'm sure. And Scooter is wearing a heavy knee brace tonight. Anybody notice that? It sure is. As Scooter checks into the ball game, and Jeff will get a breather of those five fouls. We got 525 up to play in the first half. The Tigers lead 20 to 12, and we'll have Scott Dolan on the free throw line for Greenbrier East. As Dolan fires, it is off the iron, no good. Rebound to Miller. He feeds it outside the grill. As Scooter in traffic gives it in the front court to East. And it's knocked out of bounds off by Greenbrier. And Johnny Brandt almost floored. And now Johnny called a foul on Greenbrier on Keys. That's number one on Keys. Team foul number four or five? Five, five. How about Johnny was going to hit the floor there, didn't he? He almost got right. I had a feeling that that's why that foul was called. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure there was a foul. But, well, we could have been. but Johnny would have had difficulty seeing him flying through the air. So we'll have these on the free throw line for the Tigers if you do one and one. The first one's up and no good. As Stephon rebounds in the lane and we got a traveling call. So it'll be out to the Spartans now. 5.20 to play in the first half, 20 to 12. Tigers lead. And Greenbrier wants a timeout. So with 5.20 left to play in the first half, we'll be back right after this. It was two minutes and 40 seconds count in the second quarter for Princeton 20. Greenbrier East 12. And so far we've had a sluggish... I'm not going to see where you figure that out. <laughs> Concentrate on the ball game, mate. Let's get, let's get on with this job here. Charlie Wright's getting off easy over here. Pick on Charlie. 
turn my mic on. I've got to get even with you guys here. Is it on? Yeah. Okay. It's been on. We've heard everything you said. I'm going to pick your thing up. The you can pick your head and the rattle of the stretches. The rattle? And I hope none of that mumbling is discernible. You have been awful hard on me, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Green Valley will have the ball out of bounds in the backcourt. As uh, David Darnell will end up it. And he gets it in to Scott Dolan. Dolan into the front court with it. Goes to the left side, fires off the baseline, no good. Rebound, front court, going down by Rose. Rose holds it outside. Now gives it to Keyes, and Keyes will start the offense again. Tigers singing that 1-3-1 one, one zone, pretty much. No, they're going man-to-man -man right now. Tigers are going to man-to-man. As Keyes out front, directing traffic. As Keyes starts it toward the right side, looking underneath. Can't get anybody open, so he gets it to Darnell outside. He gives it back outside to Woody, and they give it to Dolan. Dolan on the point position. The Woody on the high post. The key is back to Dolan. To Darnell. Darnell way outside. The step on out there looking him eyeball to eyeball. Gives it to Woody. And Woody gives it back to Keys. And Keys thought he had opening. There was Scooter looking at him. So now this time on the near side, Rose with the ball. Gives it to Woody. And Noah stands back off the key and watches him. To Dolan as Mike Eads covers him outside. To Keys. Keys. by David Darnell and Greenbrier, I believe, will be Tiger Ball, base back on the left side of the lane. The wind will inbound it, and the Tigers set up their offense. As it gives Eads, firing out of the corner, it's good. Eads from 23 feet, pounds it in. 22 to 12, Tigers up by 10 now. As they've got a quasi press on, as Wilford Keyes brings it to the front court, gets a pick from Woody, gives it to Woody. Woody outside, gives it back to Keyes. As Scooter Will comes out to play the defense on Keyes. And they drop it to Woody. Now to Dolan. Goes under. And we've got a traveling call as the West reached in on that ball and deflected the dribble. And as he tried to get control of it, he traveled. 22 to 12. Greenbrier with a turnover. The Tigers have it. As the West inbounds it to Guill. Guill gets it to Eads. He's still in the backcourt. Now moves it to the front court. They double team him and head it off. And he bounces it off of the leg of Kenny Rose. And out of bounds, it'll be Tiger ball. It almost came back on my leg. Yes. Still had an alley ball right there, wasn't it? Eads will inbound it, gives it to Will. As Scooter starts it toward the top of the key to the left side to James DeWitt. And DeWitt to Miller, deep in the corner with it. As Miller looks at the bucket, gives it back outside of DeWitt. To Will, top of the key. They come around the horn to Eads on the right side wing. Looking underneath to Stefan on the baseline. Works his way in and fires. Good. Stefan taking it straight to the hook. 24 to 12. The Tigers up by 12 now. As Keyes brings it to the front court for Greenbrier, starts it down the right side, into the corner, reverses, brings it out, gives it to Gene Woody. 
Ray Wooding it was, and Wooding gives it to Kenny Rowe, and he'll give it back to Keyes. As Keyes starts it on the right side, still driven with it outside. As Keyes turns it toward the left side, drops the ball, throw it out of bounds, and it is Tiger ball. As Keyes off control of it, and the Tigers create the turnover again. As Scooter Well will bring it to the front court for Princeton. And now Greenbrier drops back into a 2-3 zone defense. As the Will with the ball on the right side. Looking inside, gives it to Will outside to Eads. Firing from outside, no good. Rebound pulled down by Rose of Greenbrier. Up once, gives it outside to Dolan. As Scott Dolan takes it to the front court down the left side. Goes to the lane with it. Feeds it over to Wooding. Firing good as Wooding from six feet left side puts it in. 24 to 14, Tigers lead by 10 as Miller into the front court with it for the Tigers. Works to the right side, goes to the baseline. He'll fire, good, as Miller from 10 feet. 26 to 14, a minute 20 to play in the first half. As Dolan into the front court with it, trying to get it underneath to Keyes. Cannot as Keyes finally runs it down the far side. Now to Rose, and Rose firing out of the corner is fouled by DeWitt. That's number one on uh, James DeWitt. And team foul seven or eight on the Tigers, whatever it is. And that will put Kenny Rose on the free throw line. As Kenny fires, it's in and out, no good. Didn't John Campbell into the ball game as a, uh, to replace Dolan? Who did he replace? Dolan? Oh, or no, Rose. Senior guard. Okay. As Rose fires again, it's good. As Dolan sets out, and now for the Tigers, we get David Phillips coming in. And Stefan Strain will get a chance to take your breather. We've got a minute 13 left to play in the first half. Greenbrier will press as DeWitt inbounds it to Guill. He gets it to Eads. Eads moves it toward the front court, gets it to Phillips cross court. They go to Miller, high post with it. Miller firing from 18 feet off the iron, no good. Rebound caught for, we got a foul called in the knees on David Phillips. That's number one on Phillips. And that'll put one of the Spartans on the line. I believe it's Kenny Rhodes going back to the line. 26-15, Tigers leading by 11. We got a minute four to play in the first half. And Kenny Rose will be on the line to shoot a one and one. As Kenny says he's ready and he fires. It is good. He'll get a second attempt. At line for Kenny Rose. And Rose will have one more. 26-16, Tigers lead by 10. We got a minute four to play in the first half. As Rose fires, in and out, no good. Tipped up by Wooding, no good. Now rebound, came claimed by the wit of the Tigers. As James feeds it out with one hand to Quill. Scooter, the sophomore guard, will bring it to the front court. To the right side to ease. They're standing outside. They're going to make Greenbar come out and play man to man. As the wit with the ball on the far side right now, Scooter Quill standing right in the center circle. And passing it back and forth with James DeWitt. And DeWitt has the pass intercepted there. It's deflected by Keyes. Goes down, lays it up and in. Good. As Wilford Keyes with the deflection and the score. 26 to 18. As Keyes fouls these on the inbound play. And that's number two on Keyes. Team foul number six on the Spartans. That'll put ease on the free throw line for the Tigers. He'll shoot a one on one. Greenbrier, he's kind of slowing the tempo down, affecting the Tigers shooting and uh, everything. They just have to, they stand around a lot, and uh, you don't get a chance to... But the far, up the far cry from last Friday night, uh, when Parker's push is in here. As he fires the free throw, it's good. He'll have a second one. 27-18, Tigers lead now by nine. 28 seconds left to play in the first half. Mike's picked up nine points on the night. He fires, and it's no good. It was good, but they ruled it no good because his toe touched the line. So it is negated. And Greenbrier will have the ball. Inbounding is David Darnell. He gives it to Keyes. Keyes works it toward the front court to Wooding. Gives it back to Keyes. 
Starts to throw to Key between the legs level and comes back. They go to Wooding on the high post. Gives it back outside to Keys again. We've got 16 seconds on the clock. As Keys working outside against the Tiger Bear and the man. As they've got Campbell open and they almost threw it away. Campbell finally pulled it down on the baseline. As they give it back to Keys, top of the key, he'll fire it 16 good. Well, for Keys, puts it in with three seconds left and the buzzer goes off. And the end of the first half, the Princeton Tigers, 27. The Green Valley Spartans, 20. And we'll be back with halftime right after this. Halftime score, the Preston Tigers, 27. The Green Valley Spartans, 20. As the Tigers had 14 points in the first quarter, 13 points in the second quarter for a halftime total of 27. Greenbrier East had 10 in the first quarter, 10 in the second quarter for a halftime total of 20. As we're waiting for the drawing of the winner of the Bowl of Lunch, which has become somewhat of a tradition here this, this uh, season, in the first half, Team Statistics, Preston had 12 field goals, Greenbrier East 9, Preston was 3 of 5 at the foul line, Greenbrier East of 2 of 6 for the score of 27 to 20 at halftime. Mike Eads had four field goals, one of three at the foul line, nine points. Jeff St. Clair, one field goal, three fouls, two points. James DeWitt did not score in the first half of the ball game. Stephon Strain had two field goals, four points. Jimmy Miller, five field goals, two of two at the foul line, and 12 points. Jimmy had eight points in the first quarter of the ball game, and no fouls called on Jimmy Miller tonight so far. For Greenbrier East, Scott Dolan had two field goals, 0 of 2 at the foul line, 4 points. Wilford Keys, three field goals, 6 points. Kenny Rose, 2 for 2 at the foul line, 2 points. Ray Wooding, one field goal for 2 points. David Darnell, three field goals, all of them very early in the ball game, and 6 points on the first half. And Charlie Wright, do you and Jack have the uh, team statistics? Okay, for Princeton in the first half, they made 12 out of 31 for 39 percent. They pulled down 17 rebounds and committed eight turnovers. In the first quarter, Princeton shot 37 percent, and in the second quarter, they picked up the tempo a little bit and shot 40 percent. Jack, do you have Greenbrier? In the first half, Greenbrier East was 9 of 19, 47 percent, 11 rebounds, nine turnovers. Uh, first quarter, they were 45 percent. Second quarter, they were 50 percent. So uh, they're, they're shooting pretty good here on Princeton's home court. Princeton better pick up the tempo a little bit. They sure should, but it's hard. Uh, Greenbrier just won't let the ball move very fast. So we'll be back with Craig Owen, a special halftime guest. First, let's pause for this commercial message. The Princeton Heights, of course, our halftime score. The Princeton Tigers find themselves on the top of the 27-20 score. The long side, we've got longtime Tiger faithful Charlie Atkins. First of all, Mr. Atkins, we want to welcome you aboard. Thank you very much. Nice to be here, Craig. Of course, you've probably seen as many Tiger basketball games as anybody in the area. How do you feel this Tiger team matches up against some of the ones of the past? Well, I think talent-wise, they have as much talent as I've ever seen them have here, maybe with the exception of the team two years ago that won the state championship. But super good uh, talent. And uh, also, they have the rebounding and the shooting and, you know, the ball control if you need it. And uh, there's no reason why they shouldn't beat anybody that they play on a given night. I think the Tigers, um, I'm hoping, of course, they picked up their third loss just uh, last Tuesday night against the North Fork Blue Demons over at the Armory. And by no means am I trying to cut down the Blue Demons because no one should ever be shamed by no. losing to the North Fork Blue Demons. That's right. But I, I'm hoping that the Tigers will be shocked into reality that nobody's going to give them a win. That's right. When you play North Fork uh, in basketball, it's like, people that play Notre Dame in football, you have to be ready to play, and they don't give you anything. You either win or they beat you. You know, it's just, that's how good they are. But Princeton is capable of beating North Fork on a given night, and they should have probably won that game. They had the game won, and uh, a series of events, the uh, foul, and Jimmy missed, and the clock was put back on one second, and that could have made a difference in the game. But you have to give them credit where credit's due. They go out there and they take it to you, and when they beat you, they know they've got you. That, that's true. Now, North Fork uh, probably outplayed our Tigers in the fourth period over there. They hit like nine out of 13 shots in that fourth period, and that's hard to beat, that kind of shooting. Well, that's right. They got that undefeated uh, string going, and they're trying to always beat a triple-A school because that adds that much more experience to their game play, and they've got a great coach and a great record, and when you go against that, they know you have to beat them. Of course, the Tigers, we feel, were 
of the most talented teams in the area, probably the state. And we feel as though they're probably the best team in the state. But they're still, they, they lack that, that one little ingredient. And I think a lot of people call that intensity. That's right. They go in a game like this game here, and they let uh, Greenbrier East set and hold the ball for four or five minutes. And I just can't uh, really understand, you know, a team that, with all their talent and make them run and, you know, do the things that Princeton is so good at. Then they would, you know, when Princeton doesn't score 20 points a quarter, they've had a bad quarter because with all that firepower, I noticed Jimmy there in the three minutes in the second quarter, he didn't touch the ball. And when you've got a kid 6'8", and with his ability, he's got to get the ball for them to score a lot of points. Of course, we've had a lot of uh, talent scouts from all across the nation in here to look at Jimmy. But you know, Princeton's talent by no means stops there. They've got some fine perimeter play from James DeWitt. And, of course, uh, Mike Eads is a streak shooter. When he gets hot, there isn't hardly anybody stop him. But, you know, a lot of people overlook the talent and the contribution that a fellow by the name of Stefan Strain makes to this ball club. That's yeah. right. Uh, especially Tuesday night, he played a fantastic game over there against North Fork. Jimmy was out of there about two quarters and a half, and Strain played a fantastic game as far as I'm concerned. And, of course, they all, uh, do, uh, each played a super good game. But that goes to show you that they played even with North Fork with Jimmy out of there. And so if they had had him probably for a whole four quarters, they should have won the game by 10 or 12 points in my opinion. I feel as though the Tigers are about to mature, and I think the key to that maturity is the fact that their pitch is getting uh, quite a bit of play in the last three or four games and doing a fine job. They've got, uh, of course, Adams coming off the bench doing a fine job, and this little sophomore guard by the name of Scooter Grill is doing a fine job for him also. Yes, sir, I think so. He's got a lot of talent for sophomore, and Phillips has tremendous potential to be 6'3 and jump the way he does. And then the big boy Adams played a great game against Parkersburg. So I think all those things can make them a great team by tournament time. And really losing three or four games is not a, a total disaster. You know, I, I don't to lose those during the season. Right. But when you win that tournament, you can't lose anymore. That's true. <laughs> so that's, that's true. That's the thing. We got Charlie Atkins alongside. First of all, we'd like to thank him for stopping by and chatting with us. And we wish him the best of luck throughout the, the rest of the season. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Thank you, Greg. Okay, all righty. We'll be back with more of our halftime show and the second half tip-off right after this. The Tiger Gymnasium buzzing right now at halftime. The Tigers leading at halftime by a score of 27 to 20. And Bob, your synopsis of the first half is? Well, my synopsis is it was entirely too slow for my liking. Uh, Green Bay East has come out to play a controlled ball game. They are not going to let Princeton run. They're not going to let Princeton uh, pull away from them. And I think about two weeks ago when Mac Marks was up here, he, he indicated what they were looking for was a way of taking the air out of the ball. And I really don't look for Green Wire East to, uh, to open it up very much more because really they do not match up that well against the Princeton Tigers. And they have to play the control game. They have to hope that what shots they do take the ball in and that Princeton gets few enough shots that the percentage uh, will allow them to catch up in the second half of this ball game. Do you believe that, Charlie? Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, it looked like uh, right from the start that Greenbrier was going to slow the ball down. And uh, actually, this is the first team that has tried to slow the ball down that Princeton has played so far. And I, uh, at the first of the season, I thought a lot of teams would try to slow the ball down because there's not too many teams in the area that can match up with Princeton and uh, hard to run with. So that, I, I would think that would be one of the strategies if I was playing Princeton. Greenbrier East in the first two quarters had 10 points in each quarter. That doesn't win many ball games. No, it doesn't. And so is Greenbrier East playing to win or just playing to keep it under control? Well, they they bound to be playing to win, but uh, they, they can't let uh, Princeton, I don't think they can run with Princeton. And, you know, they're trying to hold the score down. And that's uh, good. Right? So yeah, what I they're think, saying is they're just playing to control it. I well, think, well, I think that's they're true. playing to control the tempo and hope that they're able to win by doing that. When you get 10 points a quarter, you don't beat anybody. Maybe. All right, we're ready to go as Miller cuts it to East. And East will start the second half, gets it to St. Clair, left side. St. Clair brings it out to the point position as Greenbar comes out of the 2-3 zone. East with the ball, on the wing position, left side. To step on, on the baseline, gives it right back to Mike. Mike gives it outside to Jeff, they go around the horn to gain the win. Uh, back to St. Clair, St. Clair top of the keyword, looking underneath. Now he'll fire from 21 feet, it's off the eye, no good. As the wet rebounds the traffic, puts it up, no good. He is fouled. And that foul could be on Kenny Rose. Let's see who they call it on. It is Kenny Rose. And so with 7.37 left to go in the third quarter. That's foul number three on Kenny Rose. Team foul number one. Hello, Aaron. As Aaron 
Anderson over here making faces at it. As the Witt firing the free throw, it's good. He'll have a second attempt. Same as Witt, the Witt's first uh, points of the ball game. How many shots are you taking tonight? Three? How many? The Witt fires again, it's good. 29 to 20, the Tigers out by nine now. He's going with the ball for Greenbrier in the backcourt. Gets it to Keyes, Keyes into the front court. gives it over to Woody, puts it up and good. As Woody, 29 to 22. As the Tigers lead by seven. As Eves with the ball in the backcourt. Gets it to St. Clair to the win in the front court. The Witt firing out of the corner off the iron. No good. Gets up by East. No good. Rebound comes down to Keyes. Leaves it outside to Dolan. Dolan into the front court. And in the lane drops it to Darnell. We should have a three second though. We've got a traveling violation. 29 to 22. Tigers will have the ball out of bounds in the back court. And Greenbrier will pick. press. As St. Clair with the ball. Gets it to Eve. Leads on the left side. Gives it back to Jeff at center court. Goes in the front court with it to the West. Works down, challenges Dolan, goes up, puts it on his ass, no good, Miller kicks it up and in. Jim Miller, Jimmy Miller, James Miller. <laughs> 31 22, Tigers lead by nine. As Dolan brings it to the front court, goes to the lane, fires out of the lane, good. As Dolan brings it to the left of the court, fires to the free throw line. 31 24, as the Spartans pressing the Tigers. As Eads with the ball, gives it to St. Clair. Now to Miller. Way out high, goes down the side of the lane, works his way in, drops it underneath, picks up by Eads, puts it up and in. Mike Eads hits it. That pass was intended for Stephon, went right on by him on the bounce, and Eads picks it up, put it on the glass. 33 to 24, as Keyes brings it to the front court for Greenbrier. He's directing traffic out front, the Tigers matched up in a man-to-man -man defense. As Keyes goes to the lane, he'll fire off the iron, no good, rebound. Pulled down by the whip, leads it out to St. Clair. St. Clair in traffic, trying to get underneath the ease and it's knocked out of bounds. And they call it out to the Spartans. As uh, Dolan deflected it and then maybe Eve's got a hand on it, evidently he did, the official said so. 33 to 24, Greenbrier's ball. And Greenbrier will have it out of bounds in the backcourt. As David Darnell standing back there to take, take it out. Checking in the ball game is John Campbell for Greenbrier. As Keyes, as Keyes gets the inbound pass for Greenbrier. Starts to throw to the left side, brings it back across the center circle into the front court, directing traffic as he comes. Cross top the Keyes. They go to Rose. Rose way out high on the wing. We got a whistle and a foul away from the ball. And maybe on Stefan. It yeah. is. Stefan's laughing about something back there. I don't know what it is. That's number one on Stefan. Team foul number one on the Tigers. It'll be out of bounds to the Spartans as they end down at the Keys. Wilford Keys with the ball for Greenbrier on the left side with it. In the corner with it to Rose. Goes underneath to Darnell. It's tipped away by Stefan. Picked up by St. Clair. He leads it out to Eads and too much lead on it. And out of bounds with a big Greenbrier ball. As the pass had a little too much fire on it. And Eads couldn't run it down. So Darnell will end out it for Greenbrier. As he puts it into Wilford Keys. Keys with the ball in the back court. With a left-hand dribble, brings it toward the left side, into the front court with it. Car around the top of the key to the right side to Campbell. Drops it into Woody on the low post, feeds it back outside the keys, goes to the lane. He'll fire from 14 feet, it's on the iron and good. 33 to 26, Tigers lead by seven. As the wet with the ball, as he's with the ball, and he is fouled by Campbell. As John Campbell foul, that's number one on John. Team foul number two on the Spartans. It'll be Tiger ball out of bounds at half court. As Eads will inbound it for the Tigers. He gets it into Scooter Guerrero, who just checked into the ball game, and Scooter gives it back to Eads. It's not close by Campbell, and flips backwards to Darnell, as they've got Keys out on the breakaway, and Keys has got the bucket. 33 to 28 now, five-point ball game as Greenbrier bringing it black. As Guerrero with the ball in the backcourt, gets it to Miller in the front court, goes to the top of the key, holds it up, and he goes to the win, and we've got a traveling call. And the Tigers want a timeout, so with 5.04 left to play in the third quarter, Dresden 33, Greenbrier 28. We'll be back right after this. Back at uh, Preston High School Gym, the score is 33 to 28, and we have 5.04 left to go in the ball game. Ralph Ball has a timeout. Glenn, what's he saying? He is saying, fellas, we've got to control the tempo, we've got to put pressure on them on defense, and we've got to make our shots when we get them. That sounds right. <laughs> Now, what he said to the official before he said that, <laughs> I, I can't really repeat. <laughs> As 
as the Tiger cheerleaders whooping it up right now in front of us, and they've got them stacked about four high. Is that right? Three high anyway. Three and a half high. Three and a half. Okay. Three and a half at. What? Where'd you come up three and a half? <laughs> one was bent over. Oh, one was bent over and got a hand on the head of the other one. And then there was one on her and one on top of that. Cut to the Greenbrier comes to the offense. It is Wilford Keyes with the ball. Brings it to the front court. Jeff St. Clair playing a defense. Trying to get it to Wooding. It's not loose by Eads. Picked up by Keyes outside. As Keyes starts it back to the lane. Goes underneath with Donnell and he couldn't get the handle on them travel. 33 to 28. Tigers lead by eight. We got 450 to play in the third quarter. Uh, Jeff St. Clair gives it to Mike Eads. He's still in the back court with it. Gives it back to St. Clair. They go to Miller. Miller in the front court. Works on Woodings. Got back to the way to the baseline. Turns, fires off the grass. No good. Rebound comes out of the wind. He's done it. The wind puts it up and in. After that rebound, bounce off somebody and off the step on and back to the wind. The wind put it in the bucket. 35 to 28. As Keyes brings it to the front court for Greenbrier. Starts it to the left side. Trying to get it to Dolan and throws it out of bounds. It'll be Tiger Ball in the back court. You know, Woody's lad pretty well put together, isn't he? Yes, he is. And, and I haven't seen him make a whole lot of mistakes. He hasn't done anything that really is fantastic, but he just hasn't made a lot of mistakes. As he gets the ball in the front court to step on to Miller, hooking off the baseline on the iron and good. As Miller with a big sweeping hook shot from 12 feet drops it. 37 to 28, Tigers lead by nine. As Keyes gets the ball into the front court for Greenbrier. Starts it down the left side, goes to the baseline, leaves it up short. It's tipped out by DeWitt, and DeWitt called for the foul. So he put a hand on somebody when he went up. That's number two on James. And team foul number two on the Tigers. It'll be out to the Spartans. We'll have it on the baseline on the right side of the lane. And Scott Dolan will inbound it for them. As Dolan puts it way outside to Wilford Keyes. Keyes. Goes across the top of the key with it. He's directing traffic. He's done a lot of traffic directing out there tonight. Tiger's in a 2 3 zone right now. As Keys with the ball outside, flips it over to Dolan. Dolan gave it right back to him. And he backs outside to direct some more traffic. I guess the Tiger's going to stay out there all night if he wants to. Now he starts out towards the top of the key. Gives it to Dolan right side. They go across court to Darnell. Back to Keys, top of the key. Firing. Off the iron, no good. Ball in heavy traffic. Picked up by Darnell. Uh, Greenbrier gives it back outside to Keys. Goes to the top of the Keyes moves it to the right side to Dolan, back to Keyes, he goes into the lane, to the free throw line, gives it back outside to Campbell, Campbell kicks it off his foot, and Keyes picks it up. So Keyes on the dribble with it, to Dolan, back to Keyes, into the lane, gives it back outside, left side to Campbell, and Campbell gives it back to Keyes. So Keyes starts it down the left side to Campbell, back to Keyes, and they come back to... Darnell and now to Dolan. Dolan at the high post gives it to Darnell on the wing right side. Back to, Dar to Dolan and he throws it to Darnell and throws it out of bounds. Well, they took about 31 passes and never did get a shot, did they? <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, the coaching staff wanted to come outside with it. Uh, at one point, right. they were bringing it in. St. Clair moves the ball to the front court to Miller. Miller waits for traffic to clear and gives it to Jeff. 2-3 two, zone, a 2-1-2 two, two zone for the Spartans. As he's with the ball on the left side. Gives it across court to the wit drives to the lane, fires it off the iron, no good. Rebound, cross court to Witt, got it, goes under, puts it up again, it's good. James DeWitt, keeping it alive. 38 to 20, 39 to 28. Tigers up by 11. As Keyes brings it to the front court for Greenbrier. Still directing traffic out there. As the Tigers bring a man to man defense, now he brings Woodings to a high post. Now he drops him back as Keyes goes to the lane and fires. Good. Keyes hits it from 14 feet. 39 to 30. As Campbell deflects the inbound fast, knocks it back out of bounds, it'll be Tiger ball out again. Coming into the ball game will be Kenny Rose for Greenbrier and Scott Dolan will come out. James DeWitt gives it to Jeff St. Clair. St. Clair gives it to Mike Eads. He does it in the back court. Gives it to the front court to step on. Gives it to the cross court to Jeff St. Clair. They go to the wet deep in the corner right side. As the wet now comes out now firing off the iron, no good. Rebound picked up by the Spartans as Campbell's got it into the front court with it. Now he turns it around, brings it out traffic, and gives it to Keyes. Uh, Keyes on the dribble. Directs more traffic, brings it towards the near side. He wants somebody in the corner, don't have anybody. Now he gives it to Woodding. Low on the post. Runs in the middle. We got a charge on Ray Wooding. 
That is, that's number two on Wooding and team foul number three on the Spartans. Did you see the foul, Bob? Yes, I saw the foul. He just uh, got him with the shoulder. Well, Jim set. I thought so. Okay. As David Phillips gets into the ball game for the Tigers, as Phillips in down to St. Clair, gives it to Eve. He's in the backcourt with it. Gets it to Phillips into the front court. David holds it up, waits for Jeff St. Clair to come to him. St. Clair gives it back to Phillips. He's on the wing, right side. Looking underneath, gives it back to St. Clair, top of the key. As Jeff feeds it over to Mike Eves, as Eves goes it down the lane, drives the left side, goes under, forces the shot up, no good. Rebound comes to the floor, and it's stretched around, knocked out of bounds, and it's called out of bounds for the Tigers. And they call it out off of Wooding. As Stephon and Wooding scrambling for the ball. And the Tigers will inbound it. As David Phillips will inbound the ball for the Tigers. As Phillips flips it into the east. Firing out of the corner. Off the iron. No good. We got a whistle on a foul. And I think it's called on Jim Miller. And it is on Jim. That's number one on Jim. Team foul number three on the Tigers. Jim's first foul tonight. We got 121 left to play in the third quarter. 39 to 30, Tigers lead. As Key brings it to the front court for Greenbrier. To the left side to Kenny Rose. Gives it back outside. Now they bring it to Campbell. Campbell on the near side. Gives it back to Wilford Keyes. Almost lost it as St. Clair comes out to put the defense on him. As Keyes moves it right to left. Close to top to Key. They go underneath the Wooding trying off the high post. It's good. Ray Wooding. Hits it. 39 to 32. As he brings it to the front court for the Tigers and bounces off of Darnell's leg. Out of bounds, they call the travel on the Tigers. So Greenbrier with the ball and John Campbell will inbound it. As he gets it inbound to Wilford Keyes. Keyes brings it toward the front court, starts it toward the right side. Looking underneath, takes it back across the top of the key, gives it to Wooding, he'll fire over top of Miller, no good. Rebound, set up as an air ball. Came off the rebound, taken down by the Tigers, they lead it out to Miller, and we got a whistle and a foul on Wilford Keyes as they find the lead to Miller on the lead pass, and Keyes fouled him. That's number three on Keyes, team foul number four on the Spartans. And there's a technical foul on somebody. On Wilford Keyes, technical call there. And they're going to shoot the technical. They want to find out who coach wants to shoot it. And he's going to put Miller on the line to shoot the technical. 39-32, Tigers lead by seven. We've got 36 seconds left to play in the third quarter, and Jim Miller will be on the free throw line to shoot a technical foul. Call upon Greenbrier East, Wilford Keyes. As Jim fires, it's on the iron. No good. Rolled it off the side. He got front iron and side iron, and it dropped off. Is that a non-shooting foul? Well, yeah, it was a one-and-one. One. He, uh, he fouled him going for the ball for the pass, wasn't it? If Jim would have got that, it would have gone straight up in the air. <laughs> so Phillips with the ball on the right side for the Tigers to Miller, deep in the corner. Back outside with it to St. Clair. As Jeff, holding it out to center circle. As Greenbrier playing a 2-3 zone. And the Tigers like to pull him out of that. So St. Clair way outside with it. Just stands out there and holds the ball. Takes the pass either direction of Wolf Wild, just to be honest. But a nice look at the Phillips. David goes to the corner, drops underneath to Miller. Goes underneath, lays it up and in. Miller on a spinning pivot play. Puts it up and in. 41 to 32. And Greenbrier comes back with no time. Going, puts the shot up, no good. So at the end of the third quarter of play, the Princeton Tigers 41. And the Greenbrier East Spartans 32. We'll be back. Right after this. Just leaving the floor of the score at the start of the fourth quarter is Princeton 41, Greenbrier East 32. And uh, Princeton's cheerleaders are on the court right now. And Glenn, I really don't enjoy this kind of ball game. I like to see uh, a lot more aggressive, a lot faster tempo. And uh, I just, for some reason, just do not enjoy this kind of ball game. Well, it hurts both teams, and most of the years you'll see the shooting percentage has suffered. Is that true, Charlie? Well, Princeton in that quarter shot made 6 out of 14 for 43%. They pulled down seven rebounds and made six turnovers. But actually, in uh, every quarter, Princeton is getting better shooting. They shot 37 in the first quarter, 40 in the second, and 43 in the third. All right, we're ready for fourth quarter action. As Jim Miller, David Phillips, Stephon Strain, James DeWitt, and um, Jeff St. Clair for the Tigers. As a tip goes to Greenbrier, picking it up is John Campbell. 
Uh, Campbell out front with it, trying to get it over news to Rose. Rose goes to the baseline, fires good. Kenny Rose. It's at the start the fourth quarter for Greenbrier, 41 to 34. Seven point advantage for the Tigers. It's DeWitt moves the ball to the front court for the Tigers to Stephon. To St. Clair to Miller on the low post. It's not loose outside, picked up by DeWitt. As they double team DeWitt, he works his way down to the quarter court, gives it back outside to Jeff St. Clair. Back to DeWitt on the wing, right side to Miller in the corner with it. Gives it to DeWitt. And to St. Clair, they come to Phillips on the near side. To Miller on the high post, fine, good. Miller from the high post, hits it. 43 to 34, the Tigers lead by nine. As Wilford Keyes will bring it to the front court for Greenbrier. Takes it to the top of the key, moves it toward the right side. Now to David Darnell, high post, starts it down the left side. He'll fire from there, it's off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by the winner of the Tigers. Out to Jeff St. Clair. St. Clair to Stephon, goes under. Fires, no good off the glass in the iron. It's picked up by Darnell of Greenbrier. Gives it to Keyes. As Keyes will bring it to the front court for Greenbrier. 6.51 to play in the ball game. 43-34, Tigers on top. As John Campbell with the ball, gives it back to Keyes outside. As he comes over to talk to Coach Paul Weir and get some instructions. And now you move it around, start it down the right side. They get it to Campbell on the baseline. Works on the width, can't get the shot, gives it back outside. Now they go to Rose on the high post. So Phillips sets him off. And they give it to Wooding. Firing from the high post, no good. Wooding rebounds, puts it up again, no good. Rebound, court four, brought up, down by David Darnell. He puts it up and in. As Darnell hits the bucket for Greenbrier, he is fouled. And a foul called on uh, Stephon Strain. And the Tigers want a timeout. So that's the foul number two on Stephon. Team foul number four on the Tigers. So it says 621 left to play in the ball game. 43 to 36, Tigers lead. We'll be back right after this message. Princeton leading with 43, 36 with 621 left in the ball game. Drop ball calls a timeout. And uh, Princeton has, what, a seven point lead, Charlie? Yeah, Bob, they sure do have seven points, 43, 36 here. And uh, it just looks like everything's confused by the doesn't in play. Uh, just un well, that's unorganized or something. I don't know what. I think the Tigers are a little flat off for us that game. That, that hurt looking right. off of our Tuesday night. I think they're a little flat. Yeah, I thought they would be, you know, after that loss. That, that was hard to take. I mean, they did, after the game, they just stood there and, it, it, we, you know, they couldn't realize yeah, course, what I beat. Greenbrier uh, lost their kill twice. It's a little hard for the Tigers to get up for it. Yeah, it sure is. Uh. Now, Greenbrier does have another game with those kids coming up. Yeah, they played them once in the tournament up at uh, Greenbrier West. Uh, Richwood, maybe it was, or something. And then they played them again. So they've lost twice to them. They have one more game yet. So we'll have David Darnell on the free throw line for the Spartans. 43-36. Tigers are leading. If Darnell fires, it's good. 43-37. Six-point advantage now for the Tigers. Six minutes, 21 seconds left to play in the ball game. As Mike Eads back in the ball game for the Tigers. As they get the ball into the front court to Miller. To Eads on the wing right side. Looking underneath. Gives it back outside to Jeff St. Clair. As St. Clair sending out in the center circle against that 2-3 zone of Greenbrier. Now he goes to Eads. Eads on the far side with it. They drop it to Miller on the low post. Works on Darnell. Gives it over to Stephon. He puts it up and in. They were double teaming Miller. So he just cuts it across to Stephon. He put it in the bucket. 45-37. As Keys will bring it to the front court for Greenbrier. Starts it into the lane. Bang. Off the iron. No good. Tipped up by Wooding and good. Wooding tipped it up and good. 45 to 39. As Jeff St. Clair gets it to Mike Eads. And he gets it back to St. Clair. Now they go to Miller. He's in the front court. He's fouled from behind by Keys. And that's number two. That's number one. On Keys? No, that's uh, was on Campbell. John on Campbell. Campbell. Okay, number one, number two on Campbell. Team foul number, number five. five. So that'll put Miller on the line. He'll shoot a one and one. I got distracted over here looking at something in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> well, Aaron had some stick in his hand. He just put in that lady's hair in front of him. Oh no! <laughs> so Miller fires a free throw. It comes off the side of the iron. No good. Rebound brought down by Darnell. He is fouled by the wet. Now he's looking at on her sweater. Nice looking lady, though, isn't it? On the wet, that is foul number three. And team foul number five on the Tigers. So that'll put David Darnell on the line. 
Now, the Tigers have a six-point lead, and you know Darnell could pull the Spartans within four right here, so maybe this strategy is paying off. Well, I, I do believe that uh, either they are flat or, or Paul Greer's strategy has worked because it's definitely upset the Tigers' play, uh, play here tonight, I think. Darnell fires. It's good. He'll get another one. Uh, like a kind of a little Princeton sleepier tonight. Yeah, me too. really out well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Darnell, the fire one four. 45 to 40 now. Tigers lead by five. 5.32 to play. Darnell fires. It's good. 45 to 41. Tigers lead by four, and Greenbrier will press as he's with the ball in the backcourt. They double team him. He'll get it over to St. Clair. St. Clair goes to Miller. And way out high, he gives it back to St. Clair. St. Clair to Eads. Eads on the wing, right side, looking underneath. Yeah, they double team him. Now he gets it to St. Clair, and Jeff comes out across the center circle, directs some traffic. Still backing outside. The Spartans in a 2 3 zone. As Eads outside, now to St. Clair. Just standing in the center circle. As he just Taking the pass out there. Now he gets it to DeWitt on the left side. DeWitt starts it down inside. They go to Eads in the lane. He'll fire out of the lane. It's in the air. No good. Rebound comes out. Eads claims it. In traffic, he is fouled from behind by Keys, I believe. And on Keys, that's number four. And that'll put Eads on the line since they're in the bonus. So Mike Keys will go to the line to shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. 46 up to play, Preston 45, Greenbrier 41. As he's ready, he fires. It is in and out, no good. Spins all the way in and around. Greenbrier claims the rebound. Is Wilford Keys with the ball now, moving it toward the front court. Play directs some traffic, moves it toward the right side. Drop the blow to Wooding, he's firing. Good. Gene Wooding, or Wade Wooding, brings the Spartans within two of the Tigers. 45 to 43, as DeWitt with the ball in the front court for the Tigers. They double team him, He's looking for help. He gets it from Stephon down at the quarter court. He gives it back outside to Jeff St. Clair. As Jeff gives it back to DeWitt, and they go back to St. Clair. As Jeff standing outside with it now. Moves it to the near side to Mike Eads. Eads to DeWitt in the lane. Goes across the lane, leaves it for Miller. Miller puts it up and in. It's no good, I don't believe. Well, wait a minute. No goal, no goal. Foul by Darnell before the shot. Foul was on Darnell, and that's number two on Darnell. And that put Miller on the line to shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. Foul was called 8.59 to play in the ball game. 45-43, Preston leads by two points. As Miller will fire the one and one. The first one's up and it is good. Boy, he hung it on the flange. He got front iron, skipped it across the flange, and it hung there and hung there and hung there. And finally, gravity dropped it through. And the Tigers want a timeout. So with 3.59 left to play in the ballgame, Preston 46, Greenbrier 43. We'll be back right after this. Back at uh, Princeton Hospital Gymnasium, and Glenn May is looking at me like you might bite my head off at any second. Charlie, help. I can't help you, Bob. It's 46 43. Princeton has a three point lead, and uh, they will be at the free throw line. We have 3.59 left in the ball game, and we were just commenting that the games that Princeton has lost this year, the Beckley game, the North Fork, most North Fork games, they've lost those games in the last two or three minutes of uh, play. And let's hope that history does not repeat itself and that we're able to pull this one out. All right, Tigers lead by three right now with 3.59 to play, four minutes to play. We got Miller on the line. He'll be shooting the second part of a one-on-one. As gives ready. He has the ball. Puts it on the floor a few times. And fires. It's good. 47-43. Four-point lead for the Tigers. As John Campbell will bring it to the front court for Greenbrier. Starts it down the right side. This is going to Tigers in a 1-3-1 zone right now. I'm matching up that man-to-man. -man. As they go to Darnell on the high post. Out to Campbell. Firing from the right side. No good. No rebound for the Tigers. Holds it overhead. Gives it out to Texas Jeff St. Clair. And Jeff walks it to the front court.
Double C will hold knock loose. Picked up by John Campbell of Greenbrier. As he gets in the front court to key, fake. And the whip block where he's got the shot. He's ball for a foul. There's number three on Heath. And that's where Wilford Key's on the free throw line for Greenbrier. Taking in the ball game will be Scott Dolan of Greenbrier. Coming out will be Kenny Rose. Wilford Keyes on the free throw line for Greenbrier. He's fouled up first free throw. It is good. We'll have a second attempt. Okay, Keyes will have one more. Team. It's good. 47-45. Two-point ball game with the win. Inbound it to St. Clair to ease. In the front row with a left-hand dribble. Starts it down to the right side. Picks it up, gives it outside to Jeff St. Clair. St. Clair to the win on the near side, goes back to St. Clair, top of the key, comes outside with it. Good ease on the far side, he's on the wing. Way across court, long loop is fast, gives it to the wet. As the wet starts to throw the corner, they double team, he gets it to ease, top of the key with As he, back to the wet, works the baseline, fires over Donnell, it's good. Tigers up by four, 49 to 45 with 2.36 to play. As John Campbell into the front four with it for Green Drive. Outside to Wilford Keys, and Keys will cut the offense. As Keys looking underneath, goes toward the top of the key, goes around the pitch, starts the shot, can't get it off, gives it to Donnell. Gives it underneath to Woody, Woody on the baseline. Back outside with the Keys to Golan, firing from 25 feet off the iron, no good rebound, caught four, and the whip, made it for the Tigers. As Gene fakes the long pass, now give it to Jeff St. Clair. Two minutes, six seconds on a running clock. As Jeff St. Clair walks across the center circle into the front court. Sets it out to the point. Now he starts it across the court, gives it to Mike Keith on the wing right side. Mike takes it down inside, backs it out of trouble, drops it through the win on the high post, gives him the lane side. Good. James Gillette. Put the Tigers out by six now, 51 to 45, with a minute 45 to play, and Greenbrier wants a timeout. So with a minute 44 left to play, Princeton 51, Greenbrier East 45. We're here at Princeton High School Gymnasium. <laughs> Glenn, May Glenn May's giving me some pointers on how to bring this back on the air, and uh, we're going to have to work on that. <laughs> so, Charlie, what have you got in terms of team statistics so far? Okay, in the fourth quarter, Princeton has made four out six for 66 percent. They've pulled down four rebounds and only committed four to one turnover in this quarter. So they're shooting very good in this, this quarter. But they're not getting many shots. Well, the ball ain't moving all that fast. No, they're not. Cold outside, cold inside. That's right. It's warm in here. Yeah, it's warm. <laughs> all right. Greenbrier East on the offense. As Keyes brings it to the front court. To the top of the key, into the lane. Fine. Miller blocks the shot. Miller pulls it out of the air. As North. Picks the ball up, gives it out to Mike Eads. Eads moves it to the front court for the Tigers. Out to Jeff St. Clair. And the Tigers may eat that clock now with a minute 25 to play. It's DeWitt with the ball on the left side. He gives it back outside to Jeff St. Clair. He gets it across court to Mike Eads, and he gives it back to St. Clair. As Greenbrier playing a zone defense, as Eads with the ball way out front, Gives it to St. Clair as Jeff moves it toward the near side, starts it into the top of the key, drops it to Stephon on the baseline to Miller, goes across the lane, puts it up, we got a traveling call. The bucket was good. The bucket went in, but it did not count. 51-45, and Greenbrier wants a timeout, so with a minute four left to play in the ball game, Preston 51, Greenbrier East 45, and we'll be back. This falls for this. Next Tuesday night, Mount View will be at uh, Princeton High School gym for the first meeting between those two schools this season. With a minute and four seconds left in the ball game, and the score 51 to 45. Greenbrier East is just finishing talking it over after calling timeout, and uh, it will be Greenbrier East, Bob Collin, and Jimmy Miller's walking talk. All right. So now we get down to the nitty gritty. I remember the nitty gritty. Now, you, you've laid down the rule, we don't talk about timekeepers, but I remember when it got down to the nitty-gritty with 10 seconds to go, and then 4 seconds, and then back up to 6, and then down through the net at 0. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greenbrier East on the offense is Keyes. We'll bring it to the front court. Brings it across the time stripe into the front court to Darnell, top of the key. Should have a 3 seconds, don't get it. He gets underneath the Wooding. Wooding puts it up and in. 51 to 47. 
Tigers lead by four now. St. Clair with the ball. Gets it to E. Deeds into the front court with it. Between the legs dribble. They double team him. Looking for help. We've got a foul. That's on Campbell, I believe. That's number three on Campbell. And that will put Mike Eads on the free throw line for the Tigers. 44 seconds left to play. The Tigers lead 51 to 47. One of the things that's helped Greenbrier East in this fourth quarter, anyway, is uh, five for five from the free throw line. Mike Eads firing. Off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Darnella Greenbrier. Gets it outside to Dolan. Dolan into the front court, gives it to Keith, gives it back to Dolan, starts it toward the corner left side. Picks it up. They go to Darnell. Goes to the baseline. Firing. Good. Darnell from 12 feet. Gets it within two points with 29 seconds. It's St. Clair. Gives it to Stephon in the front court. Goes into the lane. Fakes. Fire. Good. And Stephon puts the Tigers up by four with 20 seconds to play. As Campbell into the front court with it for Greenbrier. To Darnell. Top of the key. Starts it into the lane. Fires off the glass, off the iron, no good. The wind rebounds in traffic as they double team him. He's on the dribble. Moves it to the outside. Changes pace, goes to the front court, gives it to Eads, drives the lane, lays it up. Good. Mike Eads puts him out by six with two seconds. That's the ball game. The Tigers win it. 55 to 49, and we had the most interesting part in the last 40 seconds. The final score of the Princeton Tigers, 55. The Greenbrier East Spartans, 49, as in that fourth quarter. The Spartans got uh, 17 points, big quarter for them, while the Tigers got 14 points. So we'll be back with all the wrap-up first. This pause for this. The Princeton Tigers winning over the Greenbrier East Spartans, 55 to 49. As Preston put together four quarters of 14 points, 13 points in the second, 14 in the third, 14 in the fourth for a game, game total of 55 points. Greenbrier, meanwhile, had 10 points in the first quarter, 10 in the second, 12 in the third, 17 in the fourth as they were closing strong. Final score for Greenbrier, 49 points. The Princeton Tigers, 55. The Tigers winner, 55 to 49, running their record out now to 6-3 and three on the season. We'll be back with all the stats. First, this falls for this. Score, Princeton Tigers, 55. Greenbrier East Spartans, 49. The Tigers be in action next Tuesday night as the Mountain View Golden Knights come into the Princeton gym to take on the Tigers. Next Friday night, they go to Bluefield for a return match with the Beavers. Of course, here on January the 13th, they were winners over the Beavers by 18, 68 to 50. And Bob, you're ready with individual stats. Well, I'm ready with individual stats. First one comment that, in a way, going up to Greenbrier East, and it's always been difficult for Princeton. This may be a moral victory, in a way, that, that the score is as close as it is for Greenbrier East. Greenbrier East had 21 field goals, 7 of 11 from the foul line for their 49 points. Scott Dolan had three field goals, 0 of 2 at the foul line, 6 points. Wilford Key, six field goals, two of two at the foul line, 14 points. Kenny Rose had um, one field goal, two of four at the foul line, four points. Ray Wooding, who I thought played a real good game for Greenbrier East, had six field goals for 12 points. David Darnell had five field goals, three of three at the foul line, 13 points. No one fouled out for the Greenbrier East start, Coach Paul Greer. For Princeton, they had 24 field goals, seven of 13 from the foul line, 55 points. They had three more field goals than uh, Greenbrier East. That was the difference. Mike Eads had six field goals, one of five from the free throw line. And normally uh, on the season, Mike Eads been hitting away in the uh, 70, 79.6% from the free throw line. Tonight he was one of five with six field goals, 13 points. Jeff St. Clair got three fouls in the first half. He did not get any fouls in the second half. He had one field goal on the game, two points. James DeWitt, four field goals, two of two at the foul line, ten points. Stephon Strain, four field goals, a couple of those in the fourth quarter, very important to the outcome of the game, eight points. Jimmy Miller had nine field goals, four of six at the foul line, 22 points. And one note before we go to Charlie Wright, and that is that both teams only the first five players scored. Charlie Wright. Okay, game stats show that Princeton made 24 out of 53 for 45 percent. They pulled down 29 uh, rebounds and committed 16 turnovers. Uh, it's interesting tonight, Princeton in the first quarter shot 37 percent, in the second quarter they shot 40 percent, and then in the third quarter they shot 43 percent, and then in that final quarter Princeton shot 75 percent. Very interesting, they made six out of eight. about play the game now. Uh, Jack, do you have uh, Eastman's answer? Okay, Greenbrier East, 21 of 44 from the field, 
Uh, he had 21 rebounds and 15 turnovers. Uh, Green Bay played a pretty good ball game. They decided underdogs off of and kept it close. And, uh, Princeton was a little lethargic on the... I guess that uh, last Norfolk had a pretty big effect on them, uh, more than we like to imagine. They, they, they looked a little lethargic out there. Well, they came out flat. And, uh, but the, the Tigers had enough to win it, and of course, uh, it's, it's... I guess uh, when you can win the games when you are flat, uh, that's the sign of a good ball club. Good ball club. Hey, like Charlie, uh, Charlie said here, Princeton shot 75% in the fourth quarter. I guess they ought to come out and play the game now. They're, they're, they're warmed up. And, Ready to go. And now today about tonight's game. The Tigers had six field goals in each quarter. That's right. And um, I, think, I think one of the things that... Uh, we have over four sixes, I'll take them about any game. Mount View may not have a winning record, the next opponent. But after Mount View, they go to Beaver on Friday night. And then the schedule really gets very, very demanding at that point. And uh, Princeton is going to have to show a lot more... Well, I don't think you can show much more consistency. But they're going to have to be able to establish their own tempo and not let the opposing team set the tempo. Oh, I think we go down and let Dallas Bennett set the tempo, that gym won't be big enough to hold everybody. Because they'll run. Uh, of course, that, now, to tell everybody, on the February 13th and 14th, the Tigers play a doubleheader at Kingsport, Tennessee. The Tigers will play the 7 o'clock game each night, the first game. And we'll talk a little more about that first. Let's pause for this commercial message. The Tigers victorious here tonight over the Spartans of Greenbrier East by a score of 55 to 49 to take their record out to six and three. Comments, Charlie? Well, it was a really a slow tempo game right from the start, Glenn. Uh, it seemed like East was trying to, to set the tempo right from the start, so, but uh, I think in the long run, Princeton really handled it because they, when they had to down the stretch there in the last three or four shots, they they made their shots, and even in the last quarter. They made six out of eight, so that's, that's pretty good. You know, when you only get eight shots, you make six of them. That's pretty good. And One other comment, uh, Glenn. Jimmy Miller had 22 points tonight, and uh, that leaves him needing 24 points. And they will play Mount View uh, here Tuesday night, so there is still a possibility of him picking up those 24 points. Uh, and he's season. 24 against Mount View. And he's 24 against Mount View. You think Urge will let the air out of the ball? No, I don't. Uh, that, I've never seen Urge do that. Now, Charlie? Yeah, he may do it because you he's, got small, Williams up there? he's got a small lineup. I think he's the biggest man. Well, 6'1". And uh, he, he may just, we, we may see a same tempo of a game here Tuesday night, really. Well, let's hope that we don't see a game in which, as I read about in one of the papers, don't remember which one, where the high score in the ball game had two points and the final score was 2-1. to one. <laughs> No, we, we may not have that kind of well, game. Well, we're going to leave it at halftime. <laughs> I don't believe I can stand that. This one's not hard enough on me. Yeah. <laughs> These, uh, it, uh, well, it, it can really lull you to, uh, you get complacent, and next thing you know, you're behind or making mistakes. Well, that was just about what East did to Princeton Knights. They was trying to just about lull them to sleep, and they, did, they really did. They took them out of their offense, I thought. By the way, Charlie, where are you buying the East tonight? Me buying? I thought this night was about tonight. No, no. Well, whichever one of you. I'm third on the list, and neither one of you characters have bought yet. Where's Jack Oh, yeah, I have. And he's first on the list, and you're... Oh, he has. So that means you're third, that's it. No, no, wait a minute. We nominate Bob, don't we, Glenn? Vote for Bob. <laughs> and anybody <laughs> who wants to join us, kind of join us over on Stafford Drive, Bob will pick up the tab for everybody. That's Coach right. Ralph Ball moving in. We'll be talking with Ralph. But first, let's pause for this message. As we're sitting back with Coach Ralph Ball, and uh, Coach, uh, coming off the tough one over at the Army the other night, uh, it's hard to keep the kids from having a little bit of a letdown, and then I think Greenbrier East took advantage of that by just not wanting to play ball. They didn't want to mix it up. Well, we, we need the game like that. Well, I know it's not good, and people don't enjoy watching the game like that, but it's uh, slow down, delivered type basketball, and we need one every now and then because it makes you know that it, they can play you that way, and you've got to adjust to be ready for it. The Tigers tonight shooting 45%. Greenbrier shooting 47%, uh, field goals pretty well even on the night. Uh, Tigers got a couple more shots, and that's uh, probably because the rebounding, the Tigers out-rebounded them. Uh, but you had a little trouble getting them to play man-to-man -man with you, too, didn't you? Well, we, uh, we really never did. They just kept uh, playing zone there at the end, but we just wanted to pull them out a little bit and make them spread out their defense a little bit and get inside a little bit better, and we did, because they just jammed it up in there, and we were ahead, so... 
But it's no use us trying to drive it down the field. When we're ahead, we will make them come out and spread their defense out a little bit. On a ball game like this with a tempo, uh, where they just keep slowing it down, slowing it down, and, and uh, the Tigers have a small lead uh, throughout the game, uh, it seems though the, the slowness just actually gets the Tigers into a little bit of a lethargic state, and uh, I guess it's the advantage of it that they, they think that maybe they can sneak one in the back door on you or so. Well, they're trying, they're trying not to run and trying to get you to play the same way. And that's their game. And the first thing you know, you're playing their style of ball. And uh, that's why we, we tried to keep as much pressure throughout the game and from a defensive standpoint on them. We went to man-for-man -man press all the court just to speed up the tempo and, and get us moving and hopefully get them moving. But we never did get them moving very much. A comment that was made, and I think that uh, you agreed uh, earlier tonight or something, Greenbrier East, football, basketball, cross-country, track, and golf, have probably a greater abundance of pure athletic talent available to them than just about any school that we, we match up with. Well, they always play us tough in basketball. I haven't uh, seen it. Last few years, they beat them pretty easily in football, I believe, haven't they? But up till they the, have. Up to the last couple of years, I think uh, it's been a pretty competitive game. But they have a good program, and uh, they, well, they were 7-3 and three coming into this game tonight, so they have a pretty good ball team. But they always have good athletes. It seems like their talent always comes on. Well, they're a bigger school than we are. They've got about 1,200, and we've got about 900 to 1,000. So they've got a few more students than we've got, and that always helps to have a few extra boys there, and I guess that helps them. Okay, now we jump uh, from the Greenbrier East to you've got Mountain View coming in, and, of course, Mountain View having a little bit off season, They would like nothing better than to hang one on the Tigers. Well, now, Mount View will be just the opposite of the Green Bar East. They run and gun. They get after you. they got great speed, and uh, they'll play a different type of ball game altogether. So we'll have to try to slow them down a little bit and try to uh, control their tempo a little bit. So some games you got to try to make a team play faster than they want to, and then you try to play them, make them slow down a little bit more than they want to. But you're gonna make, you can be sure that Mountain View will be looking to make their season right here uh, next Tuesday night. Oh, they'll play hard, and everybody does. And like I say, they really they play fast. they got probably as good a speed as any team will play all year. The Tigers right now moving into a part of the schedule that could be very, very difficult uh, because you had North Fork Tuesday night, you had uh, Green Bar East tonight, you got Bluefield next Tuesday, uh, you got uh, Mountain View uh, next Tuesday, you got uh, Bluefield next Friday, then uh, you go to Mountain View again. And then you come down to Dobbs Bennett with uh, and Sullivan East. Uh, Ralph, how do you keep the the morale and the up on these? How do you keep the tempo moving without a fatigue factor or uh, maybe looking past the game or something? Well, you um, hopefully that your schedule was so uh, attractive and teams you're playing are so competitive. I think that in turn helps the kids be ready to play the ball game because I think. Uh, if you play good competition, you're always looking forward to it, and when you're uh, looking forward to something, you don't have, uh, you don't get have any ups like that, I don't think. And um, these kids, I think, realize the seniors realize this for last year, and they've uh, they've got to really get in there and hunt it and enjoy it and really be competitive. But at one point now, starting with uh, on a Friday night, February the 13th, you're going to have Dobbs Bennett on a Saturday night. You're going to have Sullivan North on the next Wednesday night. You got Williamson. And then you got Oak Hill coming in, a fastly improving team. Uh, Ralph, there's three teams right there that uh, can blow out any high school team in the country. Oh, yeah. We uh, just got to take them one at a time and uh, uh, let it go at that. Because like now, we got to get ready for Mount View, and we don't worry about anybody after that. And uh, we just try to take them one at a time. I think that's one of the key points. Kids can't look uh, off two or three weeks to a trip or who they're going to be playing. They've got to look at the next ball game. But as, as you think back about the game tonight, and of course uh, the Tigers getting out to a four-point lead, and then of course a seven-point lead at halftime. Uh, when you, you get a lead uh, against uh, a team like Green Berries, what do you do? Did you make any changes or adjustments at halftime, or, or what could you really do against the tempo? Well, just like I say, you can only do it from a defensive standpoint, because uh, you've got to make them play. They can they can stall if you don't. Now on offense, you. Um, you can uh, control the tempo a little more. You can go inside or make them come out or what have you. But if you sit back there and don't push them and don't make them go, then uh, they'll walk it up the court every time and pass it over here and pass it over there. And 
first thing you know, you're standing around with them. And the, the big thing is you've got to get ahead and play sound defense and try not to get any, any easy buckets. What happened to us tonight is they started hitting and we, we started missing. They made the free throws. We missed ours, and that put them back in the game. On the free throws, Bob, what was the total on that? You, had, you made a comment well, both, on that earlier. Both teams, had, uh, both teams hit seven free throws on the night. Uh, but in the second half... Uh, well, in, in the fourth quarter, actually, uh, they were five of five, and Princeton was two of, two of five. That's what I mean. They hit Thursday in there, and we missed stars, and that really hurt. Of course, uh, a lot of uh, people, uh, when they uh, watch a game like this, they think that a team may be playing poorly, but really the effort uh, that the Tigers are putting out is as great as the effort they put out against Norfolk. Uh, they just can't move as much, so people kind of think that they're not uh, putting out the effort. Right. You have to go with the tempo there, and you can't uh, reckon and say, now we want to play fast because uh, just because we want to. You have to adjust the way the other team plays, and really, if you can come off with a win, that's a big thing, no matter who you're playing. If you're playing a real fast team, and you can slow them down enough to beat them, that's what you want. If you're playing a slow team, you can speed them up enough to beat them. That's a, the outcome is a big thing. If you win by one point, just so you win is a big thing. Okay, now, Mount View coming in on Tuesday night. And, of course, Mount View, again, is, as we said, is having uh, the records down a little bit right now. They don't have a lot of size. And you say they really run. I imagine they would have quite a bit of quickness in them. Oh, they're the quickest team. Uh, they're as quick as Norfolk overall. And uh, they um, are not as big as Norfolk, but um, they really do have good quickness. And, of course, uh, Ergie Smith up there, uh, coach for a long time, will have the team very well prepared. Yeah, they'll, they'll be a highly competitive. And like I say, we'll have to play a good ball game to beat them. All right, Tigers 6-3 and three on the year right now and uh, moving into the real meat of the schedule. And uh, if, if you can stay healthy, uh, the Tigers look like they're starting to put it together pretty good. Well, like I say, the big thing is to win, and as long as you're winning, you're doing a few things right, or you wouldn't be winning. Well, you did some things right last Tuesday night, and we still didn't win, but we don't want to really talk about that. That's, right. <laughs> that's water over the dam. I, I, thought, I thought we won it. Well, we a um, little um, time in that situation there. Uh, those are games that... Um, probably at the good timer we would have won it and uh, we didn't have that so we didn't win it so a uh, little uh, discrepancy or whatever you want to call it in the time and I think it's uh, never, I've never heard them putting time back in the clock in a situation like that rule book says you can't do it and, but you're at the mercy of the officials out there and what they say you you got to go along with them there's not anything you can do but something like that is very heartbreaking because uh, now, don't take anything away from Norfolk. They're a very, very fine basketball team. But the Tigers were capable of beating them at night and had beaten them. And well, they got a, didn't, didn't, didn't get the win. Well, we played better that night against them than we did the first time against them. They're probably the best by right now. As, so far in the season, they're definitely the best team we've played. And they're a strong ball team. And you can't uh, you can't lose any... Situ any uh, you can't give them nothing is what it amounts to. We can't give them extra time and things like that to beat them. They're too good and they're hard to beat anyway, so it's just unfortunate we didn't get to win when we had a chance to get it. Well, it is, and it's unfortunate because the, the kids did play hard and they played well, and, and uh, the, I know that uh, you felt that they certainly played well enough to, to win, and they did. But that's, I guess it's over the day, and we just have to leave it on the record and look forward to the next time. But, Ralph, uh, we enjoy watching the Tigers and appreciate the... Uh, you're coming up to visit with us. Thanks for stopping by. Right. right. Coach Ralph Ball, the victorious coach of the Princeton Tigers, and the Tigers will be in action again Tuesday night when the Mountain View Golden Knights come in, and the Tigers are 6-3 and three on the season, looking to move it out to about 7-3. and three. Any comments, fellas? It starts to get rough in the next uh, week and a half to two weeks, and uh, the people in Princeton, I noticed the crowd wasn't nearly as large tonight. I think people still have to get out and support this team. It's a senior-dominated team. It's one we, that uh, has the ability to produce a uh, state championship still. And uh, a couple of tough losses do not end the season. And I think I'd like to see the people get out and support the team and uh, stay behind this team throughout the rest of this season. It really starts to get rough now. I agree with you, Bob. Uh, Princeton has lost three ball games, but they've lost three tough ball games, especially that last one. They lost by one point right to Buzzer. And they lost to two two points to Beckley, and they lost four points earlier in this season to Norfolk. But uh, six and three is not a bad schedule with the teams that they have played. 
played right to, to this date. And like I say, now the schedule is going to get start getting rougher, and um, and they're going to play a lot of games here on the road, and like after the next two, and it's going to get rough. Well, but that's what it's all about. You want to, you want to play the best. You want to beat the best. Uh, to me, playing less than the best. If you win, you really haven't won anything. That's right. Uh, and uh, better competition uh, throughout the season. And, and when that final season starts, when the tournament time comes around, that's your that's your new season. So and you how well you've been prepared. That's right. And this is just ma mainly, you know, you might as well say it may be uh, practice, you know, 20 games of practice. Well, that's a preliminary. That's right. Of course, Bob Grant plays versus for the preliminaries. Do what? Okay, I'm Glenn Lutz. <laughs> and I'm speaking on behalf of Bob Grant. Charlie Wright, Jack Allaire, and Craig O, the whole bunch of elocutions, saying we appreciate the fact that you've allowed us to be a part of your evening. Back to the matter is, we I say, we just got thanks for listening. We did too, Good night, all. Work.